In this video, I'm going to show you how we can calculate areas of both parallelograms and triangles using the vector product or cross product of two vectors. And to show you the method, I'm going to work through the example that you see here. And if you already have some idea of how to solve this, do go ahead and press pause and give it a try. And if not, let's get started. So we're given two vectors. The first is a, which is 6i plus j minus 2k. And the second is b, which is equal to 2i plus 3j plus k. And the first thing we're asked to do is to find the area of the parallelogram formed by the vectors a and b. And in fact, I'll put a little one here just to indicate that I'm answering the first question. The formula for the area of a parallelogram, so I'll just write area, tells us that the area equals to the magnitude of the vector product of the vectors a and b. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that. Do make a note of it if you hadn't seen it before. And so just to make sure that we're all okay with what we're actually finding here, we're given a vector a, which I'll say looks something like this. That's my vector a as well as a vector b, so I'll just draw that like so, that's my vector b. And the parallelogram whose area we're trying to find is the one formed by these two vectors a and b. And to picture it, if I were to draw a sort of dotted line here which runs parallel to the vector b, as well as another one which runs parallel to the vector a, something like this, then the area that we're actually trying to find is the area that I'm shading right now in gray, this area here. There we go. Now, we've already seen that if we calculate the vector product or cross product a times b, the result is another vector which is perpendicular to both a and b, so I'm drawing that now in orange, and it's the vector a cross b. There we go. Now, what this formula is actually telling us is that the area of this gray parallelogram is equal to the magnitude or the length of this orange vector. And so the first thing we'll actually do here is calculate the cross product. Now, if to calculate the cross product you like to use the formula, then by all means do so. But I'll go ahead and use the determinant method. In other words, I'll go ahead and state that a cross b is equal to the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix whose top row is i, j, and k. Those are the base vectors. And whose second row is made of the components of the first vector a. So those would be 6, 1, and negative 2. So if I write those, that's 6, 1, and negative 2. And finally, the third row would be the components of vector b. So those are 2, 3, and 1. If I just write those as well, that's 2, 3, and 1. There we go. Now, calculating this determinant along the top row, this quickly leads us to i times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix 1, negative 2, 3, 1. So I'll just write that. That's 1, negative 2, 3, 1, minus j times the 2 by 2 matrix, which we obtain by eliminating the same row as j and the same column as j. So that would be 6, negative 2, 2, 1. So I just write that. That's the determinant of 6, negative 2, 2, 1, plus k times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix that we get by eliminating the same row as k and the same column as k. So that's 6, 1, 2, 3. And I write that as well, of course. That's 6, 1, 2, 3. There we go. Now, all I have to do is calculate each of these 2 by 2 determinants. So let's see, that's going to be equal to i times, in parentheses, 1 times 1, which is 1, minus 3 times negative 2. So that's minus negative 6, which is plus 6, minus j times, in parentheses, 6 times 1, which is 6, minus 2 times negative 2. So that's minus negative 4, which turns into plus 4, plus k times, in parentheses, 6 times 3, which is 18, minus 2 times 1, which is 2. And now, since 1 plus 6 is 7, 6 plus 4 is 10, and 18 minus 2 is 16, I find that the cross product a times b is equal to 7i minus 10j plus 16k. Done. And in fact, I'll box that intermediate result. There we go. Now that we know what the cross product of a and b is equal to, that's the vector we have here, all we have to do to calculate the area is calculate the magnitude of this vector. And I'll do that in the upper right hand corner here. I need to calculate the magnitude of a cross b, and that's equal to the square root of 7 squared plus negative 10 squared plus 16 squared. 
and that's equal to the square root of 49 plus 100 plus 256, which leads to the magnitude of A cross B equals to the square root of 405. And that's the area of the parallelogram. And in fact, we notice that 405 is equal to 81 times 5. And since 81 is 9 squared, that quickly leads us to the magnitude of A cross B equals to 9 root 5. And that's the area of the parallelogram. And we could write in parentheses 9 root 5 units of area. Done. Okay, now that we've seen how to calculate the area of a parallelogram using the cross product, let's see how we can calculate the area of a triangle. And so for that, we're calculating the area of the triangle formed by the same vectors A and B. Well, the good news is the method is very similar. The key really is to picture which triangle we're actually referring to. And so if I quickly try and sketch that, the triangle we're referring to is the following. I have my vector A, so that's this guy here, and my vector B, which looked something like this. There we go, that's vector B. Now, the triangle whose area we're trying to calculate here is the triangle I'm drawing right now. So if I put this dotted line here, and if I shade the area, it's this triangle right here. There we go. Now, just by looking at this sketch and comparing it to the one we had for the parallelogram, you can probably already tell this triangle's area is equal to half of this parallelogram's area. And in fact, the formula for the area of a triangle, so I'll just write area with a subscript TR for triangle, states that it's equal to 1 over 2, or 1 half, times the magnitude of the vector product of A and B. And I'll go ahead and box that formula as well. There we go. Looking at this formula, we can see quite clearly that the only difference with the formula for the parallelogram is that we're multiplying the result by 1 half. So to find the area of this triangle, all we have to do is multiply our previous result by 1 over 2. In other words, we could go ahead and state that the area of the triangle is equal to 1 over 2 times 9 root 5, and that's equal to 9 over 2 times root 5. And that's the answer. And again, we could specify in parentheses units of area. Units of area. Now, at times, when calculating the area of the parallelogram or of the triangle, a student will ask whether or not the order in which we calculate the cross product matters. And the answer is no. When calculating areas, the order in which we calculate the cross product doesn't matter at all. Indeed, since we're calculating the magnitude of the cross product, that is the length of the orange vector we have here, whether we consider the magnitude of A cross B or B cross A, whether we consider the whether we calculate the magnitude of A cross B or of B cross A will make no difference whatsoever. Both of those vectors will have the same length, in other words, the same magnitude, and the area calculated will therefore be the same. And there we have it. We now know how to calculate both the area of a parallelogram as well as the area of a triangle using the cross product. And that's it for this tutorial.